And now let's get back to the great music on the voice of the Golden West, 3SD. Is there anything you need? Nah, I've got a list. I'll do it after I've been to the pool and swim my laps. You can change the board. I'll probably do some road work later on. Is Marky coming over to help you tune the car? After school. I gotta go. See ya. you thrown that away? No, I just found it in the pile. I've got these. <laughs> See ya. See ya. Yeah, not a chance. Well, that's the sixth in ten days. Yeah, I'm running a sweep to see how many we get by Friday. Don't. I'm giving you the best number. Oh, and this will be the stolen car report. No and it will be discovered halfway between here and the school like the last five. Kids, then stop them before one of them wraps themselves around a tree. All right, we won't be late. Thank you. Car just discovered stolen from Balaclava Crescent. Come on, Susie. We're going back to school. Usual reward of silence. Hey there, Marky. I told you we're working on the car later. Brad reckons we're going to win for sure. Don't see where I play basketball for the real wheels. Yeah. Tell me you're not out there now. You can never get a look in. Hey, you haven't heard anything about a car being stolen, have you, Marky? No. I'll keep an ear out, though. Doing something with the lady constable, are you, Marky? <laughs> Quick, Joe, hide your stash. Free. But you fellas, you know anything about any stolen vehicles? No. But I might, might not, Constable. Do I know you? You should. My trial and the inquest. Your dog husband killed my brother Jason. Will Edwards. Spazzo hubby's still in a wheelchair, is he? Good. This is Ben Stewart. I've told you about him. Uh, Brad Finkelton, my husband. Good day, mate. I understand that you were in the job. And now I'm on wheels. Yeah, I guess that story's got around a bit. We should get together sometime, mate. Spin a few worries. What are you doing home? A bit early for knockoff, isn't it? Yeah. Look, I might just yeah. wait out in the okay. car. Good to have met you. Take your time. Yeah, thanks. Never told me he was that good looking, your sergeant. We were just at the high school. Will Edwards was there. He and his father have moved to Mount Thomas. Um, what about the mother? Gone. Uh, at the inquest, she came up to me and said how sorry she was about the... I wonder at the time what it must have took for her to do that. Her husband and Will staring at me, hating my guts. Will reckons that the Office of Housing have found them a place here, but I don't know, Brad. So, so what, you, you're saying they come after me? That's how it looks to me. Well, I think we should take it seriously. Coppers can get stalked just like anyone else. Well, that's what I reckon. But Brad says the Office of Housing place people in the country all the time. And if the Edwards were offered a house here, they'd have to take it. You don't buy that. Well, do you? I'll talk to the boss about it. 
so are these Edwards our car thieves? No, different subject, Joe. What? <laughs> I can see your ears actually flapping. Curiosity is one of the signs of a good investigator, isn't it, PJ? It's also what killed the cat. Oh, <laughs> thank you. We called in on Brad briefly to tell him about... Ben's the mystery husband ahead of me. Oh, yeah, we painted each other's toenails, shared our emotions, all that. Mm -hmm. None of your business. Well, oh, yeah. now that the ice is broken, you can finally bring him along to the pub. Oh, like I've been saying, Brad's still kind of settling in. Did his you hear me say I was taking no for an answer? Late at night, Brad Fingleton was one up, spotted a stolen car, gave chase. When the speeds reached 130k, the controller terminated the pursuit. But then a third vehicle turned out of a side street... The offender swerved to miss it, but ran into a street sign. So how did Brad end up in the chair? He swerved to roll his vehicle, broke his back. When Jason Edwards was killed? Yeah, found dead in the passenger seat. His younger brother, Will, behind the wheel with minor injuries. And Brad o obeyed the pursuit controller's orders? Well, you know what it's like in a high-speed chase. You get into a hunting frame of mind. The coroner found in Brad's favour. Ah, the father, Jack Edwards, made public threats against Brad, both in the court and outside. Threats like? Quote, no. if the law won't get the mongrel, I will. Well, maybe I should have a word with this Jack Edwards. No, no, I'll do it. I've not met either party. It'll probably come better that way. Hi there. Looking for a Jack Edwards. I'm orange juice, too, please. Mr Edwards? Tom Croydon. Jack. And uh, you've come to run me out of Dodge City. <laughs> no, it's not quite like that. Mm -hmm. But I was wondering about your reasons for being here. Of all the gin joints in all the world. Sorry, I've been watching a lot of old movies lately since I lost my business. Uh, can I get you another? Another beer for the man, please, Chris. And your reason for being here is... Because the Office of Housing had a vacancy in... Biggest can't be choosers. It's not because you're keeping track of Brad Fingleton. No, why would I? Oh, 18 months ago you made some very serious threats. You think I've uh, come here for some revenge? Well, the bloke only killed my eldest son, sent the other to a detention centre, wrecked my marriage, cost me my home and business. Why would I want revenge for that? Thank you. I don't want any trouble, Jane. <laughs> this really is a Dodge City, isn't it? Let me set you straight, Senior Sergeant. Yeah, I mouthed off at Brad Fingleton a year and a half ago, I did. But then I realised I already had my revenge. He's in that wheelchair. Mr Brad Fingleton, who killed my boy. May he live forever. Hey there. Mark has been telling me about your visit to the school. Oh. Yeah, Will's been giving me heaps. You know, for knowing you. Hey, um, has he ever mentioned anything to you, Marky, about why he moved here? No, he doesn't talk to me at all if he can help it. This has that effect on some people. Hey, don't let that get to you. You're just as good as they are. Yeah. Are you old enough to drink? Well, I don't drive. That's not the question, Marky. My navigator here's been working very hard. As a result, this weekend, a lot of other rally drivers are going to be eating our dust. <laughs> yeah. Hey, um, the guys at work, they've organised a get-together at the pub tonight. They really want to meet you. Oh, yeah? Who organised this? Sergeant Stewart? No, Constable Parrish. A very attractive young woman. Well, that's a different matter, then. So you come? Me? Miss a party? you got to be kidding. Time to hit the showers, Marky. Right, I'll see you this weekend, then. See you, Suze. Yeah, see you, Marky. A good kid. Hey, uh, Tom Croydon had a word with Edward Senior today. He swears the move here is just a coincidence. There you go, then. Well, the boss warned him off anyway, so... Senior Sergeant fighting my battles for me now. There's a turn up for the books. So, we tell Chummy to open up the boot, but he's reluctant. So, finally he does. And a kangaroo hops out. As they do. <laughs> that knocks my partner for six heads off in traffic down Wellington Parade. It took us three hours to catch him. No one at the station believed us. <laughs> Why would they? It's not a city story, is it? It's a country story. Happened one click from the MCG. Oh. <laughs> uh, just water now, huh? Uh, designated driver. Don't want to get too legless, do I? 
<laughs> you never told me he was gorgeous. Oh, I'm supposed to say, by the way, my husband's gorgeous. Yes. yes. Well, he is gorgeous. And thanks for organising tonight. Yeah, well, I would have done it sooner. If she'd realised how absolutely drop-dead gorgeous he really is. Uh -huh. You've know, you got to watch out for this one. <laughs> This isn't exactly the way home. I thought we'd take it for a bit of a burn. <laughs> you well under the limit. Had three in three hours and switched to water early. Yeah, no woman is ever going to drive this car, right? Correct, kid. <laughs> oh, this is peanut down. <sighs> Sue, she okay? Yeah, it's just a bit of a knock. What kind of maniacs do they have driving around this place? Someone's coming. You seem to have found yourself in a spot of trouble, Mr. Finkelton. Mr. Fingleton's fine. Miss Rayner may have concussion, but she refuses to stay in for observation. Miss Rayner feels fine, and we'll feel even finer when Jack Edwards is charged with reckless conduct. Well, you can ID him as the driver. He ran you off the road. Whoever did it drives a dark-coloured vehicle. Jack Edwards drives a dark grey Ford. It's hardly proof. What are the chances of him just happening to be on the same stretch of highway as us seconds after we're forced into a ditch? But you can't be sure that it was him who ran you off the road. Be fair, Suze, we can't. We might just get him in for a chat anyway, eh? Thank you, sir. This is mistaken identity. I didn't do it. I was driving along, I saw this Larry looking car in a ditch, and I pulled up to see if I could render assistance. It's very public spirited of you, Mr. Andrews. And where were you heading when this happened? Uh, new to the area, I was just driving around, familiarising myself. At night? I thought I might get some courier work or driving cabs, you know, and those blokes, they work nights. And cabby down in Melbourne, were you? Uh, electrical contractor. A very good one, if I may say so. Uh, lost all that when Constable Fingleton ruined my life. Would you mind if we examined your car? No, be my guest. Sign here, please, Mr. Edwards. Thank you. You're free to go. I'd love to be able to say it was a pleasure meeting you again, Mr. Fingleton, but it wasn't. So he just walks? We haven't got a thing to hold him on. There must be a mark on his car. There's too many, that's the trouble. Forensics will take a good look at it tomorrow, though. Is your car drivable? Yeah. They'll want it too in the morning. Well, if they can be fast with it, that'd be good. I need to get it ready for the rally this weekend. Can't let people scare us off, Suze. Can't. It's going to be business as usual. You've had a shock. You need to stay warm. You make hot chocolate. No, don't bother. Just come to bed. Please. Right now, hot chocolate's gonna do you more good. You're going to work today. Yeah, business as usual, right? I filled up yesterday. Today I'm half empty. You sure? Of course I'm sure. It's not my brain that's damaged. What I meant was, half a tank's like here to Melbourne and back, isn't it? Some fool siphoning petrol. Shouldn't you be going? Yeah. Love you. Yeah, love you. Should you be in today? Feeling fine, boss. We heard from forensics. Uh, 
Well, Jack Edwards' car is clear. Nothing to link it to last night. Will Edwards doesn't have a car? Not according to Vic Rhodes. I've stopped him before. Well, you think they were hunting in pairs? It could have been two cars. They both hate Brad enough. Well, we've just had a report of another stolen car. Yeah, a dark blue Holden Commodore. Stolen just about the same time as you and Brad were run off the road. Mount Thomas Police Acting Sarah Jones speaking. are out on patrol now. Department of Housing. Phoning you back. <clears throat> Constable Rayner speaking. I called them yesterday, asking about the circumstances of Jack and Will Edwards being assigned a house here. And naturally they told you it was a matter between them and their clients? Well, I find that if you're nice to people, they're generally nice back. Go on. Jack Edwards specifically asked for a house in Mount Thomas. Before or after you moved here? A week here? after. How would he know where you'd gone? Sweet talking my neighbours, following the removal van, I can think of a dozen ways. True, stalkers can be pretty obsessive. And this could be connected. Half a tank of Brad's petrol has mysteriously gone missing. So someone's either been using his car or stealing petrol from it. Mm, it's worth following up. I think you and Brad should consider taking out an intervention order against Mr Edwards. Do me a favour, when I want to join the girls' blouse club, I'll let you know. Brad, Edwards has made death threats. He followed you here to Mount Someone Thomas. Someone ran us off the road last night. An intervention well, order... Well, tell him I'm scared of him and then he'll really stop. I've seen intervention orders... Come on, if they're really out to get you. You tell me an intervention order can stop a bullet. Well, at least if he breaches one of the conditions... No, forget it! All I lost in that car crash was the use of my legs. If Edwards comes after me, he's going to regret it. Sorry about that. No, I'm sorry. I don't think me being there helped at all. Can you drop me off around the corner? I just want to check something out. Sure. Edwards, still familiarising yourself with the area? I put it to you that you learned of Mr Fingleton's move to Mount Thomas and then requested accommodation up here. Not true. The Office of Housing say it is true. They had no right to give you that information. Stalking's a very serious offence, Mr Edwards. Now, you keep away from him or I'll throw the book at you. No, that's right. Bend the law to help an ex-copper, why don't you? Just stay away from him. He'll come down on you like the proverbial. On another matter. It seems that somebody's been using Mr Fingleton's car without his permission. That wouldn't be you, would it? Not me. Any idea who? Why would I know? Because you've been watching his place. I have never seen anyone take his car, OK? Your son, Will. He's got priors for car theft. Yeah, you leave the boy out of this. Why would I take a spaz's car? You use the word spaz again in my station, you'll regret it. He just threatened me. You were saying you wouldn't take a car that had been equipped to be driven by a disabled person. <clears throat> I'd set a wheel, sure. I've seen him hooning around town. But it's like, it's got all that special stuff. If you know hand controls and things, it's not a proper car. And how do you know so much about Mr Fingleton's car? He parked at the gym. I checked it out. Did you check anything else out last night? What? Another car. Because we suspect that a stolen car was used to run Mr Fingleton off the road last night. I was at home. That'll tell you. But your dad wasn't at home, was he? No, no, he was out on the road pulling up alongside Mr Fingleton's car after he'd been forced off the road and into a ditch. Not saying any more. You're trying to trick me. No, Will, we're trying to warn you. Don't go near Mr Fingleton again. Do you understand me? <laughs> Don't even think of thinking about it. Are you satisfied? Any signing of last night's stolen car? No. I'm afraid not. Yep. <laughs> Yesterday. I saw you throwing some hoops. You're not too bad. So? So, are you interested in um, joining a team that I coach? What? 
I'm supposed to try out for a coppers team. No, it's not a coppers team, it's just a regular team. How about we talk about it while you give me a lift back to school? Suze, looks like we're back off down to the school. So, Will, you're settling into Mount Thomas, OK? Yeah. Bit of a change from the city, eh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, down in the city. Just get into real bad company, you know? Kids who would steal cars and do donuts outside police stations. Kids like that end up in trouble, Will. Do they? Yes, they do. Bad company. He is bad company. Just had a call from a Mrs Kinnear. Your yep. stolen cereal's been located. All right, we'll drop him off on the way. Let's go. We've got a blue Holden Commodore sedan. Reggio Sierra Foxtrot Tango 131. It's definitely a stolen vehicle. Ben, paint particles, same colour as Brad's car. Uh -huh. Have a look at this. Mrs Hodge's little boy, Joel. I don't know what you're talking about. Really? Wasn't it good of your mum to say your name inside your beanie? Given you're on a suspended sentence for theft, I'd say your life just took a turn for the worse. I never stole any car. I haven't got a licence. Just when do you need a licence to steal a car, Joel? I wasn't even driving. So who was? All right, maybe you were riding in a car that someone else stole. But you've got a problem, you see, because you're the only one who we know was in the vehicle, so you're going to wear it. That means you've breached your suspended sentence and you'll go away. On top of that, they'll be recklessly cause injury. You see, Constable Rayner had to go to hospital when you drove into the back of her husband's car in a stolen vehicle. Look, on the bright side, you could be out of jail by the time you're 23, 24. I thought we'd just be doing donuts again. I didn't know who was going to crash into him like that. Who? Guy's a maniac. I'm supposed to have been driving this stolen car. Who says? Well, you say you weren't. It's that pathetic loser Joel Hodges, right? He's saying I stole the car and rang Fingleton off the road. Bottom line, Will, we've got enough evidence to charge you and we're going to. You don't even have fingerprints. Hmm. Right, so either you're the only person on the planet who doesn't have fingerprints... Or you made damn sure you didn't leave any when you dumped the car last night. Are you sure you got them all, Will? Well, he did it. At the moment, it's his word against Joel Hodges. Well, we do have his beanie. And forensic will fight more. Let him fight that in court. I really do think it's time you got Brad to take out an intervention order. I've tried talking to him. He won't listen. Why don't you ask him in for another drink after work tonight? I'll have a go at him. What's he supposed to have done now? Um, if you just take a seat, sir, I'll make a few inquiries. I've got enough on my plate without getting phone calls from the school telling them a kid's been dragged off to the cop shop. Mr Edwards, if you don't mind. You, you're running this place. Where is he? Acting Sergeant Stewart will be compiling a brief of evidence. Your son may be charged. What for? With car theft and running Brad Fingleton off the road last night. That's bloody great. You, you're behind this. Wasn't enough that you took a man's son. You had to get this one into even more trouble. I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry doesn't make my Jason alive again. Why don't you just take your son and go, Mr. Edwards, and we'll be getting an intervention order against both of you. All right. Can't hide behind the uniform anymore. Got to hide behind your missus, eh? Good one. And you, we're going. Can we have a word? Will Edwards is facing very serious charges and could go away for quite some time. The question now is what do we do about Jack Edwards? Nothing until he breaks the law. What, until he kills you? We've all had to stand there and say to people under threat that there was nothing we could do until the law was broken. Why is this any different? The law has been broken, Brad. We have to take out this order. Jack Edwards is obsessed. He's not a well person. And I can understand why. Even still, we can't let him intimidate us. And like... if I take out an intervention order, then he has. I'll be hiding behind... He misses. The law. And that'll just encourage him. Richmond 203 in pursuit. Richmond 203. It's a red Holden sedan. Rego Mike Oscar Papa 782. Travelling north on Punt Road, passing Swan Street. Cheeky bastards. Richmond 203. That's a confirmed stolen serum. Report conditions and speed. Light traffic, dry conditions. We're doing 95k. He's put his foot down 105, 110. Richmond 203, you wish to terminate the pursuit? No, I'm on a VKC. Conditions are good. Bloody hell, 130, 135. Terminate the pursuit, 203. 203. It's 
Au revoir. What if he's right? Who's right? Jack Edwards. The coroner cleared you. The coroner wasn't in my car. I can still see him silhouetted. Tall one in the driver's seat. Short one in the passenger's... These two boys. If only I'd slowed down earlier... You stopped I... when the pursuit was terminated. I didn't want to. I hesitated. For a few seconds. Long enough. Oh, that's great. Thanks, mate. Bye. Right. Well, fingerprints are found partials that link Will Edwards to the car that ran you and Brad off the road. That's good news, I guess. It's the result we wanted, isn't it? Yeah, thanks, Ben. Thank you. Susie, there's a punch-up going on at your place and Paula said someone in the wheelchair was getting the worst of it. I would think about that, Marky. Yeah, and they can charge with the theft of a motor car while Mom, they're at it. Cut it out, the pair of you. I didn't steal your car. I was just learning to drive well, it. We can continue it down the station if you prefer. You must have the brains of a ferret, Marky. I'd been practicing. Wanted to show him how good I was. So I was going to drive off and then call him. Get him to look out the window and and drive up in it. Did you really think that that would impress Brad, driving his car unlicensed, uninsured? Well, I needed to do it, right? Well, why is that, Mikey? Because I can't drive a regular car. Every other kid in this town drives as soon as their feet can touch the pedals. I seen some drive, can't even do that. Marky, that still doesn't give you the right to go out. You got any idea what it's like to be in this town and not drive? I understand. No. You don't. Brad's got enough on his plate without being charged for assault. That Edward's coming to town, it's really got to him. Yeah, that's no excuse for beating people up. If he'd simply apprehended Mark Emmett, we wouldn't be having this conversation. I know, but the, the idea of Summer, the joyriding kid, wrapping himself around a pole... His feelings are understandable. His actions were way over the top. Brad, he's saying that he just wanted to drive. Oh, yeah, and I'd like to walk. I was going to teach him when he's old enough to get his learners, wasn't I? You still could. No, never, never again. Ham and cheese okay? Fine. Mustard? Thanks. Brad, about this... Don't start. They want me to drop the car stealing charges, right? It's up to you, but if you're on the assault charge... They're saying it won't look good in court. What do you think? I don't think it'll look good in court, but if I let Marky get away with it, others will start. You don't know that. What are kids in a country town got to do apart from getting in cars and hooning around the back roads? Plenty of things. Sport. Ben reckons Marky plays basketball. Oh, good old Ben! Right. I know you're not just angry about Marky, but you have to stop lashing out in all directions and talk to me. Tell me what it really is, huh? I thought you were making that. Thanks for agreeing to meet me. I think it's time for a bit of a straight talk, Mr. Edwards. Long overdue, I'd say. You found out from some source that we'd moved to Mount Thomas and you followed us here. Clever girl. I told one of your neighbours that I owed you some money and asked for a forwarding address. I'd like to clear the air. Have you and my husband sit down and talk frankly with each other? After a year and a half? What's brought this on? You're obsessed. And Brad is depressed. 
And I figure anything is worth trying to help both of you. Now you want to help me. Because it will help the man I love. I suppose that's honest enough. I'd only be doing it for my son Jason, you understand? Trying to make some sense out of why he died. So you'll talk to Brad? Just said so, didn't I? It was just before 11 at night. I was on my own in the patrol car. And D24 had just put through a description of a stolen car in my vicinity and suddenly the car just flew past me, you know, going like the clappers. So I took off after it. The headlights from oncoming traffic were silhouetting both your boys. One short. That was Will. And one tall. Mm, that was Jason. He was a natural sportsman. He was good at any game he ever played. And the uh, stolen car accelerated. I accelerated. I was in contact with the pursuit controller. And he'd just called off the pursuit when our car turned out of a side street. And both Will and I turned on the brakes, but... Well, you know, he... Yeah, Will swerved off into that pole and... I woke up in hospital with the bottom half of me dead. So... Having had two years in this thing to think about it... I, um... I now know... That... I misjudged the situation. I should have slowed down earlier. So I feel... I feel I was responsible for your son's death. I regret that I didn't slow down for the rest of my life. I've got to admit it took a lot of guts for you to come in and say all that. Yeah, I should have said it all a year and a half ago, eh? Okay. You've said sorry, and I suppose that's what I've been waiting to hear. But you've got to understand that Jason, he was my eldest son. The perfect son. He could have gone anywhere. He could have done anything. You have another son. One who needs your help. Yeah, you can say that again. In trouble since the day he was born. Is the car thief that got his brother killed. Okay, time to put this behind us. Uh, move on. Thanks. Would you mind very much giving a bloke a lift home? Man, I'd be delighted. Right here, then. Straight ahead. It's a long way out, Jack. It's a knife and it's sharp. I wouldn't go over any bumps if I was you, Brad. OK, Jack, let's keep it calm. We're all relaxed here. And don't try that psycho babble. All I want is for you to take your gun from its holster. I can't do that, Jack. It's against regulations. Do it, Suze. Oh, I'll need to get permission from my superiors. Can I get... Do, do it. it. OK, all right. It's two to one. Pass it to me. OK, now call your superiors. What? Call them, now. You, head for the highway. Shoot me, we could all die. You tell someone who cares. Put your foot down. Foot. Go faster, you get on with it. Mount Thomas, 800 to VKC. VKC to Mount Thomas, 800. You require assistance. No VKC. Can I get Mount Thomas 900 on two local? You ready, Peach? Yeah. Oh, I'll get that. Mount Thomas, Police Acting Sergeant Stewart Mount Thomas 900. Go to 2 local for Mount Thomas 800. Mount Thomas 900. Mount Thomas 800, go ahead. Put me on. Jack Edwards wants a word, boss. Jack Edwards? Uh, look, 
Susie's in trouble. Someone's in the car making threats. Male voice one, if you shoot me, we could all die. Male voice two, tell someone who cares. Thanks for that. Put him on, Rainer. Croydon. Yeah, that's right, it's Tom. Uh, what can I do for you? I've got Fingleton and his missus, and we're headed for the St David's Road. What is it you want, Jack? Nothing. Jack? PJ, Parrish, the patrol car. You two take the four-wheel drive. Use the old ridge road, see if you can cut them off. I'm pursuit controller. Get cracking. Jack, talk to me, please. Is there anyone you'd like me to contact? No, thanks. What, what about your son, Will? There must be something you want to say to him before anything happens. No more talk until I hear sirens. Jack. I've got two kids myself. I know how I'd feel if one of them died. Don't answer. My first wife died in a car crash. I know what it's like to cry until you can't cry anymore. But, but I had to go on, you know why? Because I had two kids, I couldn't do that to them. It must be them. Ross yourself, Jackie. Tell him to shut up. Shut up, Croydon. Just shut the hell up. Faster. You drive fast enough the night you kill my boy. Faster. Tom's right, Jack. You have a son. <laughs> Do I? The good one died. Will's the run of the litter, the no-hoper. You never met Jason. Him and Will, you never know they were brothers. Jason was a big bloke, tall, played rock. He could have had a career. Tom, one. I'm going to lose the road in a minute. That's what he's hoping I'm backing off. Keep going. The tall one was driving. What? You saw them silhouetted. I'm in the passenger seat, tall one driving. Lie. Lie. You, you're lying. Admit it. You're lying. Pull the trigger, Jack. You'll be doing me a favour. What's going on out there? Stop messing with my head and tell me the truth. The truth was the driver was the tall one. But Will said he was behind the wheel. So he put himself there after the crash. <sighs> Will took the blame. Police! Drop the weapon! Police! Don't move! Get out! Get out now! Come on! Squeeze the trigger. You'll be doing me a favour. In the job, Seuss, it's whatever works. You'll learn that. Well, somebody please tell me what the bloody hell is happening out there. Sorry, boss. We've got him in custody. Yeah, no one's injured. I went into a church once just to see what it was like, you know? And they had these windows with, with pictures in them. And there was this... There was this one guy with wings and girly hair. An angel. Looked like Jason. He fooled everyone. He fooled Mum and Dad. He fooled the teachers. He could lift a car in 30 seconds flat. He taught me all I know. He'd sneak out, lift one and go for a burn. Till that night, when the copper killed him. After the accident, you moved him into the passenger seat to make it look like you'd been driving. Yeah. Why? Because Mum was so proud of him. And Dad. But I... I would have got the blame anyway. Why, why is that? Because he was perfect. 
And how was it? Whatever happened would have been my fault. This is 3SD, the voice of the Golden West. Anything you need? No, I've got a list. I'll do it after I've been to the pool and swum my laps. Want me to change the board? What? Oh, yeah, thanks. Can I uh, tell them whether you've decided to charge Marky or not? Won't give the kid a record. Hey, um, you never really answered my question about squeeze the trigger, do me a favour. Or me? Eat the gun? <laughs> no way. No, I was... I'm a married man. <laughs> no, I was just psyching him out. All right. I'm ready to go. See ya.